This is an energy read between you and the person on your mind at this time. What's the deal? Eight of Pentacles coming out, so. Family ties, roots, setting down roots, creating some sort of solidarity, you know, generational um, wealth, uh, family tree. Obviously it's not all peaches and lollipops for you. Pull a few more to get the story that's happening here. What's going on between the two at this time? Maybe some sort of distraction in the love department, I see. start to a story. I don't know what this means yet, but um, it begins with, you know, love family, you know, kind of forever feeling, you know, creating a legacy with a group of people or a person creating your own family, creating a group or community to <laughs> indolence, the eight of cups. Obviously from this card, you can see there's a lot of despair, you know, um, We have the Princess of Wands and then the Four of Wands, which is completion. So these two end cards are very nice. You know, you're beginning with the thought of forever and you're ending with completion, which is forever, the love bubble, the circle of life, you know, the infinity of love, creating your own foundation, your own family um, protection, in love in your heart you know you protect someone's heart and they protect yours um there's also regarding family as well there's more than two wands here you know um so there's a lot of family feeling here but at the same time there's a lot of discord happening with this it's kind of like at this point there's a lot of um outside influences that are getting in the way either you are talking to other people they are talking to other people you're both talking to other people <laughs> so this is interesting so far this is very confusing to start with um there's a strong attraction between the two of you and there is a similar outlook on how you want love to go but this, these two cards right here are giving me trouble. There's some sort of issue um, when it comes to connecting. Um, pull some, some more cards here. But at the same time, we have the strength card, so that means like feminine, feminine power, um, you know, sexuality, strength, obviously, the princess of wands and strength is basically the same. You know, they go hand in hand, you know, it goes hand in hand together. Um, sexuality, strength, feminine power, um, attractiveness, you know, uh, Leo season, uh, Leos maybe, um, you know, or just the feeling of courageousness, you know, a spunk in a sense. Um, so there's a lot of connection here. This makes sense. The Eight of Cups and the Hermit together. Um, nothing has been said between the two of you. Nothing which is causing this Eight of Cups feeling, maybe. Or maybe there's, it's kind of interesting kind of setup too. You know, you could see the Hermit is like, you know, obviously they stay to themselves and think, they think it out. You know, when they're confused, they kind of retreat inward until they they process it themselves. Um, so there's been a lot of thinking of this relationship between the two of you, but there's no action, I see. Um, there's a lot of thought of action, um, but there's some sort of discord here of why 
there's a, someone's holding back, you know, or you're both holding back, you know, or there's been just a, a delay of some sort because there's an Eight of Cups scenario here for some reason um, that's really making me... Okay. The Nine of Cups. We see the Nine of Cups and the Princess of Wands. The Nine of Cups, you know, um, is a little bit more ready to come in um, and play in the big leagues, I want to say, when it comes to love, you know, um, they're a little bit more mature and they know what they want now. Um, it's not an older person per se, but you know, it's kind of like middle-aged, um, ish. And the Knight of Cups is always about love, you know, and affection. Um, but you know, like real love, like cuddly love, like, um, you know, family love, right? Like this eight, this eight of Pentacles, we have two eights popping out, I just noticed. So we have the Eight of Cups and the Eight of Pentacles here. Interesting mix. Um, you know, I, I see that there is some connection and there's attraction between the two of you, absolutely. Um, the cards show that there is definite attraction. There is no doubt about that. Um, and you both seem to want something stable. You both seem to want something more like family, family life, stability. Um, but there's something holding, there's something, maybe it just the fact that there's no communication is making this kind of feeling despair. I don't know, there's, there's something that's not right here. The Five of Wands. So, we go from the Four to the Five of Wands. I mean, there's a lot of opportunity between the two of you. I say that there's, um... There could be a, a great match between the two. I see, I see um, strength, you know, you're striving for completion, you know, there's prudence and family ties and the love bubble and sexuality and attraction, you know, it's all here. But why such despair? both holding back energy. I mean, the Hermit is a Scorpio uh, sign. Um, when you're dealing with a Scorpio, or at least, you know, you uncover, you stop becoming a Hermit around, you know, Scorpio season. Um, maybe there's going to be an incident around that time, you know, October, November. Um, or maybe it, this comes to an end at that time. Because um, all the other cards are positive. But there's something between you two that has hold, been, hold, been holding back. Okay, so we got fives and eights here. We got five of pentacles and five of wands. So lots of changes in, um, you know, like your. Hmm. The five of pentacles and the five of wands, it's interesting because. You hold, you're both holding some worry between the two of you. Maybe you both haven't had much luck when it comes to love, right? The Eight of Cups, a lot of cups overturned, a lot of mistakes. You know, you kind of try to learn from your mistakes, but you seem to keep doing the same pattern. You gotta look inward, you know, and, and understand where you might be falling into the same pattern. Why are you being attracted to the same type of person? I don't know, you know, um, if that's you, you know, if that resonates with you, or you're just worried in a sense of this connection because maybe both of you don't say much, you know, so there's a lot of worry, holding back, you know, your words with each other, holding back your feelings, which creates this very divided energy between the two of you. However, when you're alone and you think about a relationship, as it, as it could be, there's a, a lot of great energy, you know, like the overcoming obstacles, um, the strength to do it, the attraction is there, you know. Um, the Knight of Cups wants love, he wants this family, you know, like this is what he looks for in a relationship, you know, and the Knight of Cups is on the move, you know, that's a little bit more action involved, um, so maybe he's gonna come in 
you know, he sees you as the princess of wands, he sees you as a very attractive uh, feminine powerhouse in some sort of way, you know, like a femme fatale, you know, she's a little bit too sexy for, for him, you know, in a sense, and maybe he's worried about, look at her, I mean, she's feeling herself, she knows what, you know, her strengths, her weaknesses, um, she uses her, you know, she, herself to glow up all the time, she's extremely strong and confident and beautiful, you know, um, so it does, it would worry someone to come towards someone, you know, especially if they think that she can have someone else or ha already have someone else to begin with, maybe. Um, he doesn't want to have his heart, you know, broken. Obviously, the Knight of Cups is not about that at all. Um, but he wishes for this completion in his family, right? Um, and for some, you know, there is, there's a lot of changes that have to be made here with these fives, but the, the two eights signify something forever, you know, like this is something that you're both maybe looking at, like, could this be an actual connection or just a fling? I see it being as an actual connection, even though there's hesitation on both of your parts. <laughs> yeah, the seven of swords. There's, there's a lot of, you guys are, you guys are very scared of each other at the same time. You're scared to come forward. Um, however, it's funny because you're mirroring each other in a sense. Um, you're both feeling the same exact way about each other and you're both scared at the same time. Um, whenever the time is that you actually realize that you don't need to be scared with this person, you know, there's a lot of, uh, I think, good possibilities that can happen here. But um, until that time comes, you're, you're sitting, you're waiting, you're wishing, you're going back and forth in your head. You, you know, you're playing devil's advocate with yourself. You're talking yourself out of things. You're not being positive. You know, you're just thinking of all of the negative things that can happen and not anything good that could happen. You know, everyone always worries about, oh, what if... What if they just say no? Or what if they just turn me down really bad? Okay, you're not dead. You know, it might hurt your ego for a second, but I think you'll live through it. Um, but what if they say yes? Do you wonder about that? Do you wonder about the positives? About what could happen during a rescue situation? Do you focus on what could happen that's great? You know, if you don't believe in miracles, you'll never get one. Um, it's kind of like that. You gotta believe in yourself. Not to say that every just because you believe in it, meaning you know that it will happen for you all the time. But if you don't believe in it, that it could happen, or you don't get excited about um, it, there that there's like a possibility of it working for you, and you know you being happy with the outcome. Like you're tripping yourself up. You know you're constantly thinking about negative things. You're not focusing on what could be. You know, this great ecstasy, you know, in a sense, together. Um, so you're just worrying, waiting, sitting, wishing, you know, and all in your head in the hermit form. You're both kind of just like, eh, I don't know if I want to risk it at the moment. I see something there, you know. Okay. So maybe that, um, eventually you guys come to some sort of peace, some truce. You know, the two of swords is you know, um, combining forces, you know, especially line, you know, how you think, you know, you're really going to kind of sit down maybe, actually have a conversation um, that would lead to an understanding of each other. You know, the two of swords is two different points of view, but, you know, peace, you know, peacefully talking about um, each other, understand, just basically understanding one another on a deeper level. When I see this card, you know, it's, it's all it's beautiful, it's peaceful, it's a nice open meadow, it's calm, right? You know, you just, it's like hot air balloons in the background that you just let go of all of your ideas and your emotions and just, and know that it's peacefully being re received and, and given, you know? Um, when you can open up to someone in this way, you know, you're really going to break through. 
and then you'll be able to, to develop trust with someone, like real trust, where you can go to bed at night and know that you trust them, or like you're not tricking yourself into trusting them, like you actually do trust them. And that's that love bubble action, it's the four of wands, where you combine forces and you develop this, you know, force field around you too, around your love, you both protect it, you both know how special it is, and you, and you protect that love together. And you only do that when, when there's a meeting of the minds. Um, you can assume the other person feels or thinks the way that you do, but you'll never know. And it's really a dangerous situation to assume what other people think. Because you could be drastically wrong, you know? Um, you could take things the wrong way. You, you just might have a negative attitude or you might just you might have too positive of an attitude. Who knows? I don't know. It could, it, it could just... It could steer you in the wrong direction if you let your assumptions go wild about someone. Instead of just taking what's in front of you, if the person is in front of you, in front of your face, and they're telling you exactly, you know, uh, you know what how they feel, and you believe that they're telling you the truth, and they're not being like manipulative or anything, you know what I mean? They're actually trying to just pour their heart out to you. I mean, just listen to their words. Don't you don't need to assume. You know, like don't worry about things before they happen basically. If that's just giving you unwanted anxiety for no reason. No, who wants that? Who wants anxiety? So you're giving yourself anxiety about something that could be really exciting at the same time. Yeah, look at you. Look at all these negative cards. Look at all these negative cards. Too many, in my opinion. You're worrying. You feel pressed. You haven't said anything to each other ready to break out of your shell and just freaking say the words you know like what's the worst that could happen it doesn't work out well you know you've you've made other choices before where it doesn't work out you're still standing breathing living so sometimes you got to put your heart out there sometimes it's worth the it's worth the risk you know especially if you're feeling this way if you're feeling oppressed like you're holding back you know, like you feel something is holding you down. So, you know, you're, you're, like, you're worried, you're in the hermit, you know, you're not, t maybe you're a little bit too in your head. Maybe you're, you've been um, to yourself a little bit too long. Now it's time to kind of make a decision whether you fixate on this issue or not anymore, right? You're, are you going to make an action happen or make a decision about something? Or are you just going to always just worry and feel like you never you never put yourself out there or you never said what you needed to say or did what you needed to do or wanted to do, you know, like take a risk, you know, I don't think that the person that you might be coming towards would kill you, you know, like what's the worst that could really happen? Like you get embarrassed. Okay. But what if you don't get embarrassed? What if it works out better than you even thought? What if, this person turns around and says they feel the same way. You know, wouldn't you feel this oppression and this worry and this hermit indolence, you know, this, you know, futility, you know, this not knowing and worrying and constantly, you know, ruminating, like it would all go away. This card is super important right here. The peace card and the two of swords, super important, you know, um, Especially if you're trying to be in a relationship or if you're already in a long-term relationship, whatever it is, it doesn't matter how long you are in something with someone, if you, you need to be able to communicate. And you don't just communicate once, you communicate on a daily basis, like, or at least a weekly basis, you know, you have to, to be able to specify time between the two of you where you both just sit down or go for a walk or whatever you decide to do together and you just let loose, like... A couple of things you know like about what you need what you want what's bothering you and you kind of just give each other space to talk so you constantly regroup with each other and you also understand what the other person is going through maybe you don't maybe you wouldn't know otherwise you know some people a little bit more stoic some people are very emotional and outward with it like it really depends on the person it's like communication words and um the freedom to be able to say it without feeling like they're going to be used against you or that you're going to be attacked in any way is a beautiful thing between two people. It's freedom. 
and it is real love because you're loving this person you're listening to their worries you're listening to their excitement as well you know that's what this peace card is you know coming together you know like really talking and communicating in a way where you know who this person is and you know how they feel and that's where you get the strength to break through and, and get what you want what you dream about ultimately you know coming to this you know but that's basically the time that I can say with that okay so we have the ace of wands here there's a very strong, strong attraction between you two. I don't know what you're allowed to say on YouTube anymore, so I'll just keep it uh, to your imagination, what I mean by very strong. Okay. <laughs> Priestess of Wands, Strength card, and the Ace of Wands. This is a very sexy pair. Um, if you do, if whether you're together with this person or you're going to be, there is definitely a fire between the two of you. Without it, yes. Pull one more card just to kind of get the end feeling for this little connection here that I'm seeing, but I see that there hasn't been much communication between the two of you, but if you do that with this Knight of Cups and you kind of open up to him, he opens up to you. There's a, I'm going to put this in order here because this is going to show you exactly, you know, where we're going here. Obviously, this is all together. This is like a step into your future. Once you be able to talk to someone, you break through to where you need to go. You develop a, a trust that is unbreakable between someone, a real bond, which eventually procre you know, procreates, I guess you could say, for sure, or uh, multiplies, um, and your bond deepens into some sort of family roots creating creating strong roots so with this connection i do see a very strong connection between you two um very very strong between these two like this you don't think he likes her he's infatuated really um lots and lots of passion between you two or could be that's undeniable so the downside here is that you don't talk and you definitely don't say anything to each other, which is creating a huge, huge divide between you two. Um, and it's kind of, it's like, it is like this card. It's kind of like cobwebby, dry, you know, in every sense of the word, because there's no love being shared. It's just, it's desolate. It's like a desert of love, you know, because you're keeping it inside. You're just thinking about things. Maybe you've been thinking about it for too long and now you want to come forward, but you're worried, going back and forth in your head, oppressed, like, you know, all this can go away. All that can go away. If you could just come back to, you know, where you were starting from and get back to this point right here. This is the card that you need to focus on if you want to connect with this person. So think about how you can talk, think about how you can open up, kind of meet, uh, understand each other a little bit more, create a peace of mind with each other, right? You don't have to think the same or believe the same things or agree on everything. It's not even about that. It's about being able to communicate your differences and being open to be able to communicate your differences. And once you know that you have the peace between you two in order to do that, when you both connect with your minds, um, there's a lot of good things that can happen. Really, really strong family ties 